to a new episode of Digital Confetti, where we share strategies on how you can sprinkle all of your live streaming content across the internet so that way people can find out how amazing you are. So yes, come on through, come hang out. It is Friday, ah, end of the week. I'm super duper excited because all along here at Digital Confetti, we've been talking about all the different ways all the different ways that you can repurpose your live streaming content and turn it into blog posts, turn it into gifts, all the things. And so if this is your first time joining the show, then guess what? This is an opportunity for you to subscribe to the show. This is where you could get notified whenever we go live. It's every other Friday at 12 o'clock noon Pacific. So if you're here, let us know that you are tuning in because I will be absolutely excited to welcome you to the show. Having said that, let me go ahead and introduce you to our amazing guest. Listen, if you've been struggling with systems and you have just been stumbling over workflow processes, then this is the episode for you. Because as I mentioned, we've been talking about different ways that you can repurpose your content, but how many of you actually fall victim to Shiny object syndrome. Yes, <laughs> that is something that we are going to address today. Because here's the thing, when you have a system that streamlines your workflow and actually sticks, then you know it's actually going to work because it's not about spending so much and having this gear and that gear and that subscription if you don't use it. And so that is why I'm absolutely excited to bring on the one and only Yvonne Hyman to the show. How are you, friend? <laughs> it's Friday. I'm on live with Stephanie Liu and I got my coffee ready. What? And I get to talk systems and processes too. I'm like, this is like Christmas, birthday and Easter all wept in one. Absolutely. Yes. I'm excited about this because I find that most live streamers, when they are, when they're just getting started with their shows, it doesn't really pop up for them that they should create content. You know, and that's the thing where I'm just like, this is an opportunity for you to repurpose that content and let people know all the different ways that they can learn from you, right? Because yeah. there are those that would rather watch your show, which, hey, Vanessa, so nice to see you. Whereas some people might be walking their dog. Maybe they just want to skim through headlines, take a glance at a PDF or even a slide deck and get the key takeaways from there. So having said that, Yvie, go ahead and let them know a little bit about you while I say hello to the audience. Tell them this, all the amazing things that you do. <laughs> oh my God, how much time do we have? Now, all joking aside, hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Hyman with AskEvie.com and I call myself a business efficiency consultant specifically for digital entrepreneurs. So online coaches, live streamers, YouTubers, all of the ones of us that are working on the computer pretty much every day and having fun while doing it. And I have made it my mission to make workflows and processes simple again. When people hear admin work and, oh, and you're supposed to repurpose this and you're supposed to do this, it's always this, oh my God, can I just hire a VA? Guess what? You don't necessarily need to. And we're going to be talking about today how you can use technology and also just pen and paper to make your life easier so you can focus on your live show and the things you are good at and not all the admin stuff. Yes. So we're going to actually go under the hood and talk about our different systems because I've obviously been live streaming over the last five years or so. Yes, only five years. I'm like, five years isn't really that long. And I feel like over, over that time frame, the system has evolved, right? Because my does. lifestyle has changed. I think that's something that people need to realize too, is that with so many people working from home these days, right? And so many people juggling different things, sometimes our systems need to be updated. And, and it's like, I love that you brought that up because I just got the question from a client of mine who asked me, how long did it take you to have the perfect process? And I'm like, I don't. I don't <laughs> like, you don't there is never a perfect process life changes our circumstances changes I'm like heck 2020 is the perfect example for things just change it just matters that you try to have a system behind it that you adjust it and that it works for you that is the goal that it works for you and also your team I would I would say right, yeah. right. um 
because I find that if you're constantly switching systems and you're oh my god, tiny object the wheel. <laughs> oh look, there's a new tool. No, no, please don't. Please don't. Especially <laughs> when it comes to project management. I've seen it so often. Yes, I have a favorite tool. Don't give me wrong. But if you think the tool is going to solve your problem, I'm sorry to break it to you. It will not. You cannot just be like, okay, Trello didn't work for me. I'm just going to Asana. And then Asana didn't work for me. I'm just going to click up. No, it comes down to you doing the work, you building that habit and you implementing it. A tool cannot save you. A tool can make it easier for you if you actually use it, but the tool cannot save you. Yes, that's very true. And shout out to this viewer who said people get distracted by shiny new objects. Absolutely. Yeah. Because here's the thing. Why, why do people get distracted by shiny new objects? Because it's easier to focus on that versus paying attention to the root cause. Mm -hmm. Because in more cases, more often than not, it's not the tool that's not working. It's what's happening here. Yep. It's having the discipline in order to do it. And so this is why I'm really excited about this conversation. Ooh, this is a good one. Hey, this, this is new. Sam, Sam says, I used to work for a work friend and working with fortune 100 companies. Tools don't fix broken systems. Oh, yes. Yes. Wait, hold up. Sam. <laughs> that was legit. See, so Sam is definitely on the same page with us because tools don't broke tools don't fix broken systems. So thank you so much for that. That's like the, that's a tweetable for this. So let's first talk about why it's important to have a workflow, especially as a live streamer, right? Because if you want to scale and grow your show, you want to get the sponsorships, you want to bring in the clients. It doesn't make sense for you to repeat the recreate the process every single week or however often that you go live. So Yvi, in your experience, what's the importance of workflows? The thing is not even, I'm even taking it a step back from yours and go to the example of let's go grocery shopping. How many of us have gone grocery shopping and forgot the grocery list on the fridge? You go grocery shopping, you grab more and you forget all of the things that you actually wanted to buy. Your live stream is the exact same thing. If you are running a live stream and you do not have that workflow and process down and written down, you are prepping for your show. And I'm like, oh my God, I forgot the headshot for my guest. <laughs> what, what, what was the talking point I wanted to talk about? Did I actually share it on social media? What's happening? Not only do you end up potentially delivering just a mediocre live show, but you also waste your own time. I don't care if you're working with the VA and you have help or if you are doing it by yourself. The moment you have to be like, did I do this? Didn't I do that? Five minutes are gone and you are wasting your own precious time. And imagine what you could have done in that time. Exactly. So what we're talking is about creating a repeatable workflow process. That way you could streamline your systems. I'm going <laughs> to, we have a re reverse polarity. Yubi will always tell, tell you the things that you want to avoid. I will always tell you the things that you want to move towards, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you want to scale and grow your show, this is going to be a really important conversation. And so Yubi, going back to the question of why it's important for the workflows, what are some things that a live streamer should take into consideration as they're building out their show, planning it for before, during, and after. I love how you always pull me away from the negative into the positive. That's why we play along so well. <laughs> when you have your processes and workflows in place, it simply means you can click a button and duplicate it and be done. Now, what does that mean for your live show and your business? It means it's scalable. It means you can mass produce things, you can save a whole bunch of time and literally Literally, when that system is set up, hit the duplicate button and your whole process and workflow for the next show is done already again, too. No thinking, no missing something, no. It's just done. It's there. And you once spent this time to build a strong foundation for your show processes and workflows. 
and you just repeat it over and over. And not only does that mean suddenly your live show is scalable, suddenly your marketing of your live show is scalable and your viewers and your reach is going to grow, it also means you can hand it off. You can hand off the, the admin work and everything and it becomes fun again. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, I will. I will say this: after managing uh, not only Lights Camera Live, Digital Confetti, and oh, a new show that's coming up in February. Hold up, hold up, hold up! In February, <laughs> and Alicia is helping out with that. So that's such that, that's a that's a quick preview. It's just knowing the fact that. I love live streaming and you guys went into live streaming because you were passionate about it and nothing kills passion most than tedious stuff, right? And so let's talk about how to get started with your systems, Evie. What, when you walk through clients on this, what's the first step that you have them do when creating their system to streamline their show notes, their run of show and so on? That's where we start really, really, really simple. And I don't have any paper in hand anymore, actually close to me. Take a pen and paper, really just place it right next to you and start recording the steps you have to take before you go live, when you go live and after you go live. What are the things that you are doing? What kind of graphics do you need? Are you having a one-off show? What is the outline of your one-off show? What are you doing with your guests? What information do you need from your guests? All of these little data points and tasks that are happening, really just start writing them down on pen and paper. If you are working with the VA and they are running it already, cool. Go start, have them start recording that process. It happens so often with my clients. We're like, oh, I want to automate that. I'm ready to scale. Let's get this done. And I'm like, cool, what's your workflow? And they're like, it's in my head. Okay, let's start right in the beginning. <laughs> Pen and paper. We need to lay this out. What's happening? Because unluckily, technology is not there yet that I can just pluck into your brain. Very true. So I, the action item for those of you that are watching is what is the first thing that you do when you are planning your show? I'll tell you for all of our shows, it's always going to be what's the topic, mm -hmm. right? Because I want to know what does my audience want to learn about right now, right? And so it's an opportunity for me to go into the social media strategist group and be like, hey, what is it about like Facebook live shopping that you're interested in right now? Or what is, is it that you really want to learn about? And once I have that idea for me, my first step is really then formatting it into, and this is this is a huge show, shout out to, to Sue who was saying earlier, she's like, Stephanie, I love your 10 by 10 formula. I'm gonna give you another formula, right? Because we love formulas, we love systems. And so once you have your title down, the next is about crafting your description. So write this down. The way that I generally do the show, and Yvie, you probably have a similar system too, is the why, what, how, and what if, right? Why should you tune in? What are you going to teach them? How will it impact their business? And if they can't tune in, right? If they can't tune in, what's the next thing that they have to do? Do they have to subscribe to your show? Do they need to join your Facebook group to get the show notes? What is it that they have to do? That's generally my first step. So having said that, Evie, what's your first step? Do you start with the title or the description or Google keywords? Like what is your first step? Because you're a lot, you're a YouTube live streamer in the in, you're more of like a YouTuber in that sense, but you do live stream everywhere. So what's yeah. your first step? So um, my main focus actually interestingly is YouTube and is the SEO research. Um, because I'm going for the long tail on YouTube. The live show itself is to get in connection with my community, get that conversation going. But I also want to get the long tail out of it and answer questions and solve problems. Now, the problem on the long tail is, and finding new audience and viewers is, I need to target that specific issue they are having and what they are searching for, which might not be necessarily the topic we are talking about. So there it becomes a little bit more nerdy, SEO-y, a whole bunch of research. When I look at really just my guest shows, where I want to showcase them, where I want to showcase how they are making my audience's life easier, 
I'm starting by the people that I want to talk to and what is their value to my audience? How are they automating something, no matter if it's a tool or if it's a system or if it's us, ourselves, and our thinking? And then really, how can I wrap that up nicely for the people that might not know what they don't know? And then make it into a nice package between title and description. So even though we are focusing differently, we are starting at the same point. I, I love that we have different starting points, but we have the same end goal as far as creating value for the viewer. Yeah. So however, those of you that are watching, Elicio, Sam, Kevin, Mary Fane, Brandt, however you want to go about it is that you always have your starting point. And when you jot that down, that's always going to make it easier. Now, Yevi, you brought up the fact that like, if you have a VA, then that will help streamline the process. For those of you that have always been like, I've always wanted to work with a VA, right? And we, we have a friend right now who's like, who's been thinking about it. And I was like, girl, the first thing that you have to do is really record your screen of when it comes to promoting a show, these are all the steps that I have to do. So whether or not you're like, you can't write fast enough, you could at least screencast, yeah. right? You could even go into Restream and just record your screen and just be like, these are all the things that I have to do. Then go to somewhere like Upwork, right? Go to Upwork, pay someone a couple of bucks, even Fiverr, and say, I need you to document the process that I just did because that's my process. And I think once you have that, then it's the opportunity to turn to someone like Evie and be like, does this process make sense? Because- and I love you right now because the other point about processes and workflows is you need data points. The only thing how we can optimize our business and be able to scale it is having data points. And without having your workflows down and being able to track starting workout, you think, oh, yeah, you know what? That just takes me five minutes. That one graphic to, to advertise my live show, oh, that's done in no time. How often do we do that? So having your processes down and having those steps down allows you to also associate and estimate a time with it and see if this is actually the right time or if you are just imagining things. We all do it. We all screw our own perception. <laughs> now having this down and there's multiple ways of getting those down as you mentioned screen recorded if you are bringing on a VA have the VA transcribe it because that way they are working through the process they are taking down those steps on what needs to get done and you have a complete clear point of view rather than somebody that has done the process before which can screw the workflow again too so there's multiple ways of generating this, but yeah, totally screen record the thing and have somebody transcribe it and, and pull out what they think is important on that workflow. Yes. And I would say even so is that when you're developing your show graphics, templates, <laughs> all friends, templates, templates, templates are everything. Templates are everything. Um, I, I find that like even for this show, I have a deadline where I have to submit by 12 p.m. UTC the, I have to give pretty much the graphics. I have to schedule the shows on all of the channels. I also have to give a description. And then within that form, I have to give all of the scheduled links. And so I can't get hung up by the graphics part of it. <laughs> right? I'm like, I need, I need to get this out there. Cause if it's, if people don't know, they're not going to go right? If people don't know, they're not going to go. And so I need to have graphics in place. So what's your recommendation? What's your go-to tool when you're creating your show graphics, Evie? Graphics, easel. Easel, love the guys and girls over there. Oh my God, I swear. I have literally all of my templates set up. I have my brand set up in there. If I am not a designer, and they have taken even the time to review my stuff and be like, Evie, that title is way too long again for a graphic. What the hell are you doing? And I love them to pieces for it, where I really just have my templates in my easel, couple different variations, so they all don't just look exactly the same and I can swap things around. But yeah, I'm like within 15 minutes, I have all of my graphics done from the thumbnail to the feature image, to the Instagram image, to the square image and all of it, because I literally just, Ding, 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 done. Yes. And, and, and I love that because 
how many of you actually do have templates? I know Elicio does, Joe Floyd, you probably already do because you're a live, you're an amazing live video producer, right? But for those of you that are just starting out, start creating those templates. Even if you have to create it in Keynote, right? Like one of my good friends, you probably already know him, Bradley Vinson, he teaches you how to create graphics using Keynote and then exporting them and then importing it into Restream and you could have like these beautiful lower third graphics. So whatever it is, you could send that, give access to your VA, and it makes things absolutely seamless. And Good. I love the point you are making. The tool you use is the best one. There is no better tool than the one tool you actually use. It doesn't matter which tool you use. Absolutely. So then when it also comes into your workflow, so we've mm -hmm. talked about getting the headline for your show, the description. We've talked a little bit about the graphics. Then what is it that you do? What's the next step when you're actually promoting your show, Yvie? There's two pieces to that. So I'm I'm lucky enough, my VA is now handling all of the pre-prep of the show. We need to get the advertising out, advertising, not doing paid advertising, we're doing organic advertising, getting the posts out, making sure to tag everybody that is involved with it and really just promoting the show on those specific days and then starting to prep with my show notes. Show notes. Show, show notes. notes are, I feel like most people, they're like, I'll just do the show notes at the end. Personally, I think for my brain, it makes sense for me to do the show notes up front mm -hmm. because then I know what questions I want to ask on yep. the show. I'm already thinking like 10 steps ahead of how the blog post is going to look like. I know what the Facebook event is going to sound like. I know what the supporting social media posts are going to be. So I would be curious for those of you that are watching, do you do show notes at the end or do you like already templatize and Mad Lib style your show notes <laughs> before you even I am, go live. Girl, I'm guilty of it. Um, Stephanie finally got me to actually do show notes, what, about six months ago or something like that. I'm one of the ones where I'm like, I'm just flying by the seat of my pants. You stop me talking. I will not shut up. So I'm fine with this. But the lesson that I have learned is I did not have call to actions in there. Yes, we had the conversation on the live show. Yes, I always had questions for my guests. But when it came down to, hey, there is this certain point that I wanted to talk about. Hey, live streamers, I am talking with a fellow live streamer of mine. We are teaching you something. But if you want to drill it down deeper, I have a challenge coming up. Guess what? If I don't have that in my live shows and right in front of me, you know how often I follow. Oh, you're talking about the run of show. show. Yeah. Value, there is, if you do, it comes back down again to the point of, if you think you're going to remember, you already forgot that second. <laughs> so having those show notes, having your run of show there, and visually in front of you when you are going live will remind you of, I have that coming up. And my audience that's watching today, they will get a huge value out of this. They need to know about it rather than after the show being like, oh, I forgot that again. <laughs> so shout out to Nini who's saying that she usually has an idea for her show prior to launching the idea. Here's another good one from Sam. Sam, you are like blowing me away today. He's saying, I have a template for my description YouTube videos. Writing those more than once would just be painful. And you actually use TubeBuddy because TubeBuddy yeah. can simplify this, right? Yes. So in general, I already have in the settings, my, my, when you look at my YouTube des descriptions, the bottom stuff is always the same. That is already set in the YouTube set uh, settings and it automatically populates that. Um, we then have a framework for everything else that gets added to it, plus the SEO optimization. And that's where TubeBuddy comes in, where for example, um, I just needed to change something in my description specifically on YouTube where I'm like, okay, this is not something I'm offering anymore, but I'm promoting it in the description. Now I need to switch that out. TubeBuddy allows me again, making life simple to search for that specific text line in every single video and replace it or delete it or do whatever I want to do with it. So yes, again, having templates and having tools that bulk change things for you. 
By the Thank way, you. talking on bulk changing and promoting your stuff, rebrandly, because link shortening, having your own custom links and being able to change them after you build them because something might have changed and you might need to send your audience somewhere else. There's another. I, I love that point. Okay. So for those of you who don't know what rebrandly is, rebrandly is a, it's like a link shortener yep. in this particular case. And the reason why it's so helpful is for those of you that are restream users, right? Like, yay, restream. We love restream. It's, I have a very simple shortener where it says, if you want to watch on YouTube, it's lightscamera.live slash YouTube. Right. Mm -hmm. If it's on Facebook, it's slash Facebook. But whenever I'm creating a calendar invite, it's always going to be that same URL. And then in rebrandly, I will just swap out what the destination URL is when in restream. That's a lot of R's. That's a lot of R's. <laughs> oh, um, oh, oh. But it, it, it really works. Yeah, I absolutely love that. So shout out to the crew that says some of them do them ad lib style when they're creating their show notes. There are folks like you that are leveraging TubeBuddy that makes it very helpful. I would say for me, having done shows for the last five years or so, because I've always created a Facebook event, I go back and I swipe my old Facebook events because I'm like, you don't remember what I wrote back in like 2016. Nobody so does. I'm just going to say, hey, have you ever struggled with fill in the blank? What if you can insert solution? And it just, <laughs> it makes it so beautiful, so easy. Yeah. And the run of show is super duper helpful as well. And so when you've when you've done all this, when you've created the headline, the description, the creative assets, now you have in your mind the show notes, then it's time to have the show, which is why you talk about the purpose of having a run of show, right? Because yeah. there are things that you want to promote, things that you want to answer on air and having it there in front of you is helpful. I'll say that if you're if you're a live streamer and you're still just beginning, back in the day and you probably did the same thing too evie is that when i first started i just had post-it notes and i would just say why <laughs> what how and what if and then I everyone post -it post -it note. Note. i had one more the look oh, up okay. the look the look up, up. The the look look up. up. <laughs> yeah and i had to throw that in there too and funny. that's one of the easiest things that you can do is because if you put those post-it notes on your monitor, then at least you're still looking in the same direction, right? Versus like, oh, here are my notes. And then everyone's just looking at your beautiful forehead. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm always amazed where some people are capable of running a multi-guest live stream off of a laptop. I'm like, oh, I yeah. have three screens. And I'm like, this is this is just enough for me to have, to be able to pay attention to everything. Absolutely, I know. And notice, like, whenever I whenever I want to show your comments, notice that I'm strategically like putting like Yvie full screen, so I'm not distracting. As far as like, oh, let me look over there. It's like little oh, yeah, little by little the way, thing. I, I'm wait 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 there. Yes. It, it just helps. helps. It helps a lot. So having run a show is absolutely very helpful. And then what do you do after the show? Because when it comes to digital confetti, I've been walking everyone as far as like show is done. It goes into Descript. Descript turns into the blog post, turns into the one minute social media video clips, all the things. What's your process? Because I know that you actually work with the editor too, which mm -hmm. I'd be curious on what that workflow looks like. We are actually, you have the perfect timing for this because we are ramping up our repurposing game and getting way more into this. Um, with my live shows right now, I've been going for the long tail on YouTube for the past simply because of needing to pay attention to my time and where am I putting it. Um, we finally have a little bit more time and resources to do more with it. So rather than only just focusing on the YouTube SEO optimization afterwards and really drilling down on the description so that we show up high on searches for the issues we have covered and for the solutions we have brought, we are now also stepping way further into the repurposing game with Instagram stories, meaning taking the video and taking oh. those knowledge bites from my guests and making them nice and sweet into a shorty 
where you get this aha moment within 60 seconds and really focusing down on the value that happens in between the conversation, in between the explaining why you are literally getting the aha moment, the how, here is what you need to do. You want to drill down farther on it? Cool, we have the full video over here. And really doing the repurposing natively. There is nothing worse to me than having a square video with black on the side or on the top. It really is not that difficult to resize your video once you build it for the Instagram portrait style to also make it in a square. Take the time in the beginning to really look at how you are editing your shorties so that you can repurpose them easily and resize them easily into a square or into a site. And then send the stuff out there. Use a tool like a go up holds and their evergreen scheduling to send that out there. Again, be efficient with what you are doing. Meaning, cool, we stepped up our game. We are now creating way more video content and shorties to be shared out there. But I don't want to be sitting there every day or every week and reposting this and sharing it again because chances are only 20% of my audience has seen that the last time I posted it. So what yes. we do is we plug that into an evergreen schedule, which means this is not a happy birthday post or a Merry Christmas post. This is something that is long-term applicable for my audience. It will still be viable six months down the road. So we put that into an evergreen schedule that automatically repeats itself every two to three weeks. Smart. Yes. And you actually introduced me to our good friend, Dr. Lindsay Padilla. Yes. And she has this amazing, amazing program called Encore Social. And what was cool about it is that that particular program, if you're launching a course or a product, it was cool because you could plug in a date and then she would map out what kind of posts that you would yeah. do. But what I was like, oh, lateral thinking, how does this apply to what I do as a live streamer, right? Not necessarily launching a course, uh, a course but what can I take and bring it over mm -hmm. into live streaming and from her, what I absolutely love is her her idea of the ACES framework. Now, so for those of you that aren't familiar with the ACES framework, it's A-C-E-S, right? And so she says, when you're building out your social media content calendar, you want to have social media posts that establish your authority. So when you have a show that says, hey, I know all that there is to know about graphic design. I know all that there is to know about business efficiency. It goes into that bucket for authority. Mm -hmm. Then you have connection and connection are things about, you know, why did you launch your show? Why did you launch your business? And then you have E for engagement, which is like, hey, have you ever struggled with X, Y, and Z? What are the problems that you have with this? And then this could actually be like the show that you're going to produce. And then S is the sizzle. That's where you're going to promote, subscribe to my show, uh, download a product, things of that sort. And so how this actually applies to what Yvie said into using Agora Pulse is when you bucketize your content, right? Now you have all of your ACEs put together, A-C-E-S, because you've created those videos and it will consistently go out on social media, right? Monday is authority, connection, engagement. And then by the time it's later in the week, then you're gonna do the sizzle. However, which way that you wanna do it is absolutely going to make sense for you. So if you guys found, if you're loving this so far, please, 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 please go tag someone, let them know that they need to be here. Because I think for the both of us, you know, we're, I think what's been so helpful for us as far as getting our shows sponsored is having systems, yeah. right? Because brands want to work with content creators that know what they're doing. And if you're the type of person where you feel like frazzled, <laughs> right? That's going to come across in your emails when you're trying to land these sponsorships or when you're trying to get clients from your live stream shows. Is there anything else that you'd want to add about systems in that respect for sponsorships, TV? I love that you mentioned the being frazzled. It was, to me, systems are in my blood. So I never even really considered that. But I had a client come to me and I'm like, okay, why? You as the user, you as the one going out there, going live, 
how does it make you feel when you have your systems not in place? Again, as you mentioned, I'm the pain point person. And she's like, you know what? <laughs> when my behind the scenes is not done, when I do not have my workflow ready, when I do not have my processes ready, that's when imposter syndrome hits the most because I don't feel like I have my sh together. So to her, one of those big ba pain points was it doesn't matter how great I am on camera and how I potentially show up in that live show, talking to a brand sponsor, talking to potentially investors that want to give you money for your show, she couldn't represent herself because she didn't feel like she had all and everything in order and systematized. And suddenly I'm like, it was literally a light bulb exploding in my head where I'm like, the systems is not just for us to have less to do or whatever, but feel confident in what we are doing. And I'm like, huh, it still gives me goosebumps where I'm like, <laughs> I never looked at it that way. But yeah, now that she said it, I'm like, where might I'm not perfect. Everybody knows I am I am the most with postage notes, even though I am all in systems. They are moving digital. But none of us is perfect. And looking at myself after learning that, I am most comfortable and can show up for myself and be proud of myself where I have my systems in order. Yes. So if you're if you're just tuning in, we're talking about how to save time and streamline your workflows, especially for your show notes. So everything that we've talked about so far is like, what is our thinking behind the thinking when launching our show? How do we come up with the content? Right. How do we create the designs? And as we're going through this process, the whole entire time we're thinking, how do I hand this off to someone else? How do I hand this off to someone else? Because when that sponsor calls, ring, 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 you got to pick up the phone. You can't be like, oh, I'm in, I'm in Canva right now. I'm still messing around with these fonts. You know, like yeah. you ain't got time for that, boo. You ain't got time for that. Yep. You need to go and hand that off to someone else mm -hmm. that gets paid $25 for that, $5 an hour for that, because you, you're thinking strategically. You're thinking about the future of your show. Okay. Cool. Shout out to Sam Montoya, who is saying Descript has been super cool for repurposing content. Yes, mm -hmm. that's my complete game changer. Have you started using that yet, Evie? Or is that still is that a thing yet? So the thing with me is with this German accent that I have, a lot of transcribing softwares have troubles with that. And the one and only that has done so far the best ever job with transcribing my accent has been Temi. So Temi, okay. Temi. Interestingly, so not even, I don't even have to go repurpose IO, which where you actually have people transcribe and prove things. Temi is a complete AI based transcription software. And I actually automated that through Zapier. So every time a YouTube video gets published, my Zapier triggers, which is an automation platform that connects tools with each other. And YouTube video gets published, it triggers and sends it straight up to Temi and Temi gets working. I don't even have to touch it. I love that we all have we all have different experiences for what we use for transcription and just the fact that we're having the conversation that transcription is essential mm -hmm. is important because I still feel like those live streamers that are just beginning are like, I'm just going to do the video and that should, that should suffice. I think we as marketers, as content creators, we also have to be mindful of different audiences that may be hard of hearing those that learn better when they're able to skim through your content or for like, even, you know, I'm a parent and sometimes I can't have the volume on when I'm in kindergarten. Right. Yep. So, but if I could still learn from you, because that's what I want to do as a viewer, I want to hear from Alicio and Sue and Demetrius and Evie. I still want to learn from you. And if you don't give me the opportunity to learn in a way that is flexible for my lifestyle, then I miss out, you know, then I'm going to turn to the next content creator and be like, well, then I'm just going to go to the next person. You want to add something to that? 
and you can repurpose the transcription mm -hmm. like how often do we scroll through instagram or facebook and we never turn on the volume now when you take your live show and you repurpose it make sure you use your transcription and that piece of the transcription to give that value and i know i have in my audience on youtube specifically a couple of people that do had inner ear infections and anything and one in specific comes to mind she gets splitting headaches she literally has to schedule her day around what she can listen to and what not and she is like please please give me subtitles give me the transcription to this so i can watch you and read without me having to quote waste my my brain power my the amount of time she can listen to things in a day. Yes, okay. So one question that came in is the run of show because you, mm -hmm. you brought it up. Is it cool if I show them real quickly, like yeah. what the run of show is? Yeah. And then and then I wanna show the amazing stuff that you're doing in ClickUp as well. That's how we bring everything together. We're gonna to bring it all together because now we've just kind of told you and now we're gonna show you. So let's go ahead and share I'm gonna share a tab with you. And I'm gonna show you the video script maker that Yvie was talking about earlier. So this is, this is my baby. This is, like I said, is years and years of putting together all the different shows. And the reason why this is so helpful is because for me, someone that's managing three different businesses in multiple shows, this is a game changer, right? So what happens, is that you put in your start time, you put in your greeting, hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Lights Camera Live or Digital Confetti. What is the tagline, which is about your show, and then you put in your name. If I have a guest, I'll check it off. In this case, I had Molly Mahoney, I think it was like last week. And then I put in like the three woman. points, right? Remember when you and I were talking about um, having the questions, mm -hmm. right? So in my mind, I already have like in my setup form, hey guest, what are three questions that you want me to ask you? So we plug it in there and then we get into the second tab, which is the video script maker. And this is where like the magic happens. This is where you have your hook, your bumper, your intro, your opener, your teaser, things to get your audience pulled in the entire time. And anytime I want to create new copy, there's this red checkbox here and it's, I tick the checkbox and it's gonna give me a new prompt that I can use. This is game changer because when I find something that I like, I just copy and paste it over into the draft. Once I fill it in with what I want it to look like, then I have a complete run of show. And this is where I have like all of the show notes. And this is where Yvie was talking about if you have an iPad, yay for iPads, <laughs> <laughs> right? When you have an iPad, then it's like, oh yeah, this is gonna be the hook that I'm going to use. Now I have to play the bumper. And depending on how detailed you are when you're producing your actual event, you could actually have the timestamps that are on the very last page. And so for those of you that were asking about this, like, tell me about your run of show, you could always find this over at Lights Camera Live slash run of show. Yubi, did you want to add anything? Because I remember you were one of the first testers and I knew if I could get a very process oriented person like Yubi to fall in love with this, I was like, then it's good. <laughs> I love it. It's like, what 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 else can you add to that? I'm like, you already have trigger points in there. You have call to actions in there. It makes it really, really, really simple to just get your run of show done. Get it done. Yeah, yeah, get it done. And then book your next guest. Start going into the promotion of your show. And it'll go from there. Someone, someone made this comment. They said, accessibility is so important. Thank you both for taking that into consideration. Yeah. I mean... It's important. And I know you used to build like websites too. You're down here now. You used to build websites too. And isn't there like accessibility? Oh, yeah. That you have there to is, take into consideration. There is, there is major laws now, which I am happy. I'm like me as a German. I'm all for laws. I'm all for, for telling people what you should do to help other people one of my things. But yeah, specifically when it comes to web design, there's a lot of laws out there now for accessibility. And I have seen over the last year a lot of specifically realtors and rental companies getting in trouble with their websites because they were not accessible to hearing impaired people or reading impaired people where it's like, the the tools we have the tools 
for people that are reading impaired to translate what we can see on a screen for them to be able to gain that information. The tools are out there, but a lot of big companies have been slacking on implementing it. Got it. Got it. So shout out to Keith, who is now a big fan of yours. He's now officially subscribed to your YouTube. In fact, for those of you that are interested in learning more about Yv, please, 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 please show her some love. She's over at askyv.com. Because how often does your show air? Um, we are now, so uploads on YouTube are happening once a week and we have a weekly live show too, where I'm switching between having guests on the show and going into technical and house how to's. So yeah, Got it. both weekly happening Got it. on YouTube. Um, this is a shout out to Nini who was asking about the live video structure, the video script maker you could find over at Lights Camera Live ROS and you could find it there and it just... I'm always adding new things to it. I mean, you and I, I'm always like, oh, this would be good for your swipe file. Let's add it in there. So every now and then I'm just like, let's add that in there. So Nini, if you want to go ahead and give that a, give that a peek, you can find it. Having said that, let's talk about the magic that you do because you are the undisputed click up international go-to person about business efficiency. And so I'm going to share the screen because you have this little magic for us. And what would you like to share about this? Because this looks hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> this is hardcore. And again, it's like, as I, as I always tell my audience, breathe. This has been evolved over months to go. You can pull templates for this. So, but again, breathe. Start implementing your system as we talked before and go step by step. Now, what you see here is a full on system. So for me, again, as I mentioned, I am going live by myself, but I also have guests. So I went the route of having a form in ClickUp. And the advantage to this is the moment one of my speakers submits their information right here, it automatically becomes a task right in here in ClickUp. So I don't have to worry about of having an email and making it an actionable item and remembering it because I've built it in a way that that guest submission becomes a task in ClickUp and automatically gets the due date set to two days after they guest submitted their information, meaning, cool, the information comes in, it becomes a task, it tells me in two days, hey, you need to follow up with your speaker, make sure the headshot is fine and get them scheduled. Mm -hmm. That is kind of the automation piece that happens before the show when I choose to invite a guest. I also have a spot right in here for live show ideas. How often does it happen to us where it's like, what, what, what should I talk about? Who should I talk with? Those ideas always come in the shower or walking the dog. They never happen when you actually are scheduling a live show. So I have a spot in here, just dropping everything in here. As you can see, uh, Nimble is coming to visit oh, me too. Oh, Nimble is good. Them. Yeah, yeah. we're going to have them on the um, live show too. And then what happens here, everything is based in my list view. Everything is task oriented. Everything is action oriented. Everything needs to get a due date. Meaning once it's in here, this is just an idea. It's not actionable yet. It's just a brain drop. The moment it goes in here, it needs to have a due date so that I can actually do something with it. And when we look into, let's see what we did with Nimble. As you can see, it has already some information and there you go. This is where templates come in. I do have a template, those are hidden right up here in a template center for everything. I do have a template specifically just for my live show, which then means um, Nimble submitted the information, Michaela submitted her information, it all got in, it got set to a due date, cool, we got it scheduled, awesome, she's really coming on the show. Now let's get it actionable, because if we don't put a date to it, it's not going to happen. You're going to push it out for something that is just simply more important. Pulling this template in now automatically tells my VA, hey, by the way, 
we need to get the live show prep done. We need to get the description done. We need to get the social media posts done to get that marketing piece going. And you can go as detailed or as broad as you want in here. Again, the more information you have, the less the chances that the VA is going to come back to you and be like, what, what did you mean by that? What do I need to get done? There is my point to mention SOP, standard operating procedures. That is where you bring in the video that you recorded of how do I actually do this or the written out version of it. Um, once that is live, that task actually blocks me and tells me, hey, you're not ready yet to schedule a live. You don't have the description. The VA hasn't done that yet. We can't do that yet. Once she, once my VA says, hey, cool, live show prep is done. Everything is scheduled. Here you go. I get my task assigned and ClickUp tells me, hey, by the way, you, you need to Quick schedule your live show. So, because Eugen mm -hmm. had just, um, he had just popped in. He's like, what app are you using? So you're getting a preview of ClickUp. Correct. And one of the questions that I have for you, Evie, is when you, once you have like all of Michaela's information that she mm -hmm. filled out the form and then it goes to the next step, is that a, is that a dependent task? Yes. So once it's done, then it lights up the next one. Got yes. It. So visually right here, that little gizmo, that little red gizmo says it's blocking something. And that little yellow gizmo tells me I'm not ready to do it yet because I don't have the assets yet to do so. So you have those dependencies straight up in ClickUp. Now, you mentioned that that those tasks automated and once that it, guest information comes in, things happening that's when you get really nerdy. So as a beginner right in here, you can build the form. The form always, always generates a task. So that is happening without you needing to do anything at all. Now, if you are somebody like me that has been around ClickUp quite a little bit longer, there is automations. And those automations then can say, okay, Michaela's information came in. She got approved to be guest and scheduled. Now, when I say info received, I want ClickUp to say, cool, we got the information. Now automatically add all of the subtasks to Michaela's task. So Evie doesn't have to go in or the VA doesn't have to go in and be like, okay, now what do we need to do? We need to do this and we need to do that and we need to do that. You don't even have to touch it. Again, work in stages with this, please. Do not get overwhelmed. I'm really just showing you what's possible in here. Take a deep breath. I know when you are in the beginning of working out your workflows and processes, this is a lot. I just want you to know it's there for you whenever you feel comfortable to automate that. Do not try to automate it right away. You really need to get clear on your workflows first and build those templates out, and then we can automate everything. Yes, I love how you just wrap that whole up. So for those that are just tuning in, we just talked about the whole how you can save time by streamlining your show notes, your workflow process, even as far as repurposing. Mm -hmm. Now, for those of you that just jumped in, we're just like, what was that software that she was using? It's ClickUp. And so again, if you have questions about ClickUp, she's the go-to person, right? You go, uh, you go over to ClickUp and you look for consultants, you will see her beautiful face there because she will walk you through it. But don't you actually have like a live streaming program that's coming up? Funny timing for us, actually. Um, I am starting the Streamline Your Live Stream Challenge on Monday. What we are oh, doing okay. is it's a five-day challenge where I'm walking you through my whole process from prepping to building your graphics, to multi-streaming, to the process behind everything and the evergreen marketing at the end. Five full day packed with information on how you build that process. Did I lose you? No, I was muted. <laughs> I was going to say, is it cool if I show them um, the streamline your live stream? Because I think that would be yeah. really fun to share with them. Okay. So let me 
Let's turn this off over here and then I'll share the screen. We'll go over to the, cause you said this is actually just starting on Monday. Correct. Right? We are starting on Monday. Um, Ecamm was kind enough to jump in with a bonus lesson too on how we can app our own live stream. Um, Restream sponsored the whole challenge. They are actually giving us a whole bunch of stuff for giveaways. So there is a whole bunch of things happening even last minute where I'm really, really, really excited about all of this. This is exciting. So can, for those that are just tuning in, cause I'm, I'm hearing, <laughs> I'm hearing the comments totally light up right now. Um, can you go through this and I'll just, I'll just scroll through the page. Cause this, this is happening next week, right? Yep. We're okay. starting on Monday. We're starting on Monday. And as you can see, I build it in a way where we are starting to build out the whole workflow. So again, we are focusing on ClickUp on the first day. How do you build that streamlined workflow? How, how do you make it happen? What's the admin stuff behind all of it to really kick butt in your live stream? We are then moving into your prep for marketing. What are the images we need? How are you templating those images and graphics? How do you get them done easy and fast? We are then moving into using Restream to multi-stream because there is nothing easier than just clicking a button and going live on how many different platforms? I don't even know. I stopped counting. <laughs> um, also allowing you to pull in comments from everywhere, have that engagement with your audience way, where they prefer to be. Got it. Um, cool. Yeah, and then we are moving into the marketing piece of things no matter if it's pre show or after show who else to pull in for that we are using a go up holes to showcase that as i mentioned the whole evergreen stream and really keep that content going and make the most of of your live show and then i do have one of the bonuses on this website which is Ooh. kelly noemir bella's baby got bought engagement <gasps> bot Yes, Kelly Nomo Mirabella. She yes. is gonna come on and showcase her Facebook engagement bot. What that bot does is, hey, you want to go watch the live show? Come over here. You want to get the show notes? You're gonna have to share the show. So it really triggers your audience to get more engaged with your live show. And as I mentioned, um, Ecam reached out to me. They are gonna come on and show us how we can make our live stream look really more even more fancy so we're gonna have a nice easy go live for our beginners and we're gonna have the fancy version of taking it up a notch with ecamm too love it and so shout out to sam montoya who's just said signed up so i can see how to leverage click up more oh my there's, goodness there's a lot of resources on my youtube channel where it's like there is so much literally i am in the comment section if you have questions literally just comment on the youtube videos there is so much all of the last month's content was focused straight up on live streamers so you guys gonna love it i love it and so for those of you that are interested if this is something that you've been thinking about like hey i really need to streamline my shows that way i could scale and grow right this starts on monday okay so if i were you i would get this done signed up right now that way you could rest you could rest the entire weekend and then come monday transformation time, right? That's when you're going to start leveling up and scaling up your systems. So that way you can make room for bigger projects and all that stuff. So the best place to go is askev.com forward slash streamline dash your dash your live stream. So that was fun. Thank you so much, TV. I really enjoyed that. I really do appreciate you coming onto the show to talk about how you could save time and streamline your show notes everyone this is this is the difference that makes the difference right when you start live streaming it's great because you're getting that audience engagement but at some point in your business right in your show as the executive producer that's the point where you're going to get sponsors you're going to get guests to be on your show and you want to make room so that way you could actually think strategically so i hope that you found a lot of value from today Yivi, you are absolutely amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for and having for those me. of you, yeah, you're always like 
<laughs> you, you always have like a lot of knowledge bombs to share. And if I were to share anything with everyone, like, you know, it's still the first month in 2021. And I find that a lot of us are trying to figure out like, what's our purpose for 2021? What's our why? Oh, wow. And if I were to say to you, you know, if we look back at the very beginning of how life started, why we started our business and then go back and we always, always go back. Whenever we give birth to something new, the very origin is that there's always that one cell, right? There's this one cell and this one cell has all this knowledge and all this learning. But in order for life, to happen, that cell has to divide. And when that cell divides, it's able to pass on what it has learned. And so everything that you've learned just now, you have to fulfill that higher purpose. And what do you do? Pass it on. Mm -hmm. You pass it on because it doesn't make sense for you just to hold it here by yourself. Yidi and I, we just spent the last hour going above and beyond showing you what happens behind the scenes, how we've systematized so much in our business this is the difference that makes the difference. Do what works best for you. And if you want accountability, Monday is where you need to be. Monday is where you go, here's the idea. Now let's tie it into action. So make that happen. Okay. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any other questions, Yivi, what is the best place for them to find you? I'm literally Ask Evie everywhere. So no matter if it's Instagram, Facebook, YouTube is where I push most of the content where you will learn the most. But I am one of those people. I'm tethered to my phone. So you pretty much can find me anywhere. Got it. And speaking of which, because Mimi had asked this earlier, she said, are you ladies on Clubhouse? And I was like, why? Yes. Yeah. I'm Clubhouse. That's, that's where I got an iPad because I got an Android phone. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I'm at Stephanie Lou. Right, first name, last name. That's where you could find me. Evie, what's yours? Is it Ask Evie too? Yep. It okay. is. Ask Evie everywhere, even on Clubhouse. There you go. And for those of you that are interested in learning more about live streaming, I would definitely say check out Thursdays at 4.30 p.m. Pacific time because my good friend Molly Mahoney, she is the host of Live Video Creators. Love and there's a bunch of us that usually jump on to Clubhouse and we talk about secret tips about how to take your show from like unknown to unforgettable. forget forgettable. So there you go. We'll wrap it up for now. Evie, you were absolutely amazing. Thank you, friend. Everyone take care. Mimi, I want to hear from you. Demetrius, Mike, Sam Montoya. He's going to be there on Monday. Sue, everyone take care and have a good one. Bye everyone. Bye everybody. <laughs>